so many people want to consume and consume and consume, especially during these times. I'm like, for what? So you can be more depressed because the way the government's handling things, that's a whole other side of whatever in my beliefs. But I'm like, don't do that to yourself. There's so many beautiful things still happening in life that the government and the news is not reporting on, but they want to instill fear in you so they can have control over you. And that's exactly what the news does to a T. Hey there, welcome back to another episode of American Snippets. I'm your co-host, Barb Allen. Today, I have the pleasure of sitting down with Molly Trotter, who I stumbled across after searching for specific things online on Instagram. So obviously, she's very good at what she does because I found her in the spirit in which it was, it was intended. And Molly's story and her message and her platform and her spirit and her approach are all so relevant today, every day really, but I think especially today because we're gonna talk today about Molly's story about how she was really living her dream life and that dream career that she worked so hard, wanted to do since she was just a kid, lived that career, had some major disillusionment in that career and it kind of imploded. Molly had a decision to make on whether to take that disappointment and give up and get bitter or to go on and rebuild. And she went on to rebuild. And what she did now, I think she's probably reaching more people than she would have before in a more positive way. Uh, she is teaching people how to do many things, including build multiple streams of income, which is so important today for obvious reasons. And she's using her platform to spread thoughtful grace and wisdom and nuggets and encourage peaceful, respectful dialogue on very controversial topic. So I love all of that. Molly, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us today. Yeah, you got it, Barb. I'm happy to be here. Happy we found each other. Yes, me too. I'm happy uh, that you're so easy to respond to, too. You know, that's important. If you want to, you want to build and you want to grow, you have to be able to respond and connect to people. I love that you, that you, you're down with that. So let's get into your story first and give people a little background on where you are and where you come from. I know that uh, what I had seen on you, you were one of those little girls who grew up with a dream and a vision and a passion for your life. And for you, that was being in the news industry. You wanted to be a reporter. Yeah. Yeah. My, my whole goal was to give the underdog a voice and to be able to use such a powerful platform like TV. Uh, my voice just had like a fun time being in the spotlight. People always gravitated towards me. I've, I've always been in leadership positions since I was a little kid, captain of the soccer team or volleyball team or leadership, whatever. And so just going into the news, it just seemed like the right fit. I'm like, okay, I have this platform. I, I'm a good person with a good heart. Let's see where we can go with this. But two years into the five years I was working in television, I, I, I caught myself looking around. I was like, what is this? Like, I have to lug around my own gear. I'm going into dangerous situations, horrible money. The content that we're putting out there is depressing. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be a part of this. So they quickly found out that I had too much of a light personality, fun personality to be on like the evening news because it's more <laughs> doom and gloom. So they yes. put me on the morning show for most of my career, which I loved, but talk about no life. I mean, I was up at like one or two in the morning. Um, and my shift would go till noon. I was live from five to nine. But then even after that, they're like, oh, we need you to work some overtime. So sometimes I'd be working from like 3 a.m. to like 5 p.m. Oh, because wow. they needed extra. And then I have to be in bed by seven. So I'm like, no life in my 20s. It was, it was a grind to say the least. But the biggest thing was the impact. It wasn't, I wasn't giving the impact that I wanted inside of that arena, if you will, because they just didn't want it. I had news direct, my old news director, the last one I had, literally tell me, hey, we want the story told like this. I said, it's not told like that because it's not that. They're like, but we want it this way. And uh -huh. I said, no. And I walked out and they didn't like that. And I was like, that's my credibility, not yours. Like, this is why people can't trust us, you know? Yes. Wow. That is very interesting. And, and again, so on point for today, because I haven't found a single news outlet that I believe a hundred percent accurate. <laughs> you know? And mm -hmm. at one point in time, I was headline news when our, we had tragedy hit my family. My husband was murdered in Iraq. I had four little kids. We had a murder trial we were involved in, all sorts of stuff. So I got to see what it is like to be 
on the other end, like that headline. And I saw things about how our story was twisted and reported inaccurately a little bit. And, and just like how I'm like, wait a minute, that's not actually what happened or how it went, you know? And so it can be disheartening and disillusioning. And what is your, we'll get into other things here in a second, but I'm curious to know, how would you advise people on how to watch, how to consume the news? Mm, that's such a great question yeah. because ever since I left, if I, if it's on anywhere, I look at it from a different lens. I'm like, I know exactly what you went on, what it was like before you got on air, all the, the BS, the this, the that, whatever. And so I can't watch it with like a clean slate. <laughs> so I don't turn on the news at all any anymore. Um, there are certain news stations local because I do live in California. Wildfires are a thing. I want to know if there's that kind of danger or if there's something I need to know about. Uh, but I usually go on Twitter. So I recommend yeah. everybody, I'm like, go on Twitter. It's the perfect app for like news bites where you can only have so many characters. You get it in snippets. I follow a few people, a few organizations. I get it. I'm off. I'm done. And then so many people want to consume and consume and consume, especially during these times. I'm like, for what? So you can be more depressed because the way the government's handling things, that's a whole other side of whatever in my beliefs. But I'm like, don't do that to yourself. There's so many beautiful things still happening in life that the government and the news is not reporting on, but they want to instill fear in you so they can have control over you. And that's exactly what the news does to a T. Yeah, I believe in that hundred percent. That's exactly why we started American Snippets and what we're doing to kind of be a part of bringing real stories and make sure the real heart and spirit of actual people in this country are being shared more than the, you know, the headlines and the news and not to deny that that stuff is happening or it's important to understand. Right. But you have to counter that or mm -hmm. you're just going to give up and despair. So I, I love that. So what happened then you're four or five years into your career and you're still, you're young now, you were younger even then uh, in your twenties, right? Your early twenties when, all this was happening around. That's a big job to have in your in your twenties, and a huge commitment to have time wise, and to give up and to, be, and to dedicate to that too. So, how did that all start to kind of come undone a little bit in terms of your yeah your career? So, I yeah, huge time commitment. You're absolutely right. I mean, no life in your twenties is supposed to be the fun time, right? But I just always have had such a bigger vision on my life. I know I've had a big calling on my life since I was born just to be a, a person of really big influence and impact. So I thought TV was the route. So I'm like, okay, you know, so a lot of things took a backseat. Um, and there's a lot of things I wish now looking, I'm 30 now looking, I'm like, oh, I wish I would have done this and this, but I had no time, no money. I couldn't make that happen. So how my career started becoming un, like started unraveling was I wanted to possibly find something else, but I didn't know it at the time. So I'm huge into uh, nutrition and fitness. So, um, a guy I was dating at the time, we actually started our own nutrition and fitness, like training online training where we would train people. We had a, um, a nutrition line that we used. And so we had extra income coming in that way. It was so much fun, loved it. And then I had my boss one day being like, you need to stop posting that stuff. And I said, excuse me. They're like, viewers don't know the difference. You can't post that kind of stuff. And what really got his attention is he told me to stop. I said, no, again, walked out the door. I had no problem saying no, because I'm like, you can't, you can't tell me what to do when I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not going against the rules. I would say, yeah. show me in my contract where I'm going against the rules. Right. right. So then <clears throat> what really unraveled everything was I ended up posting a transformation photo that lit the news world on fire. We got calls from people all around the country. I was on this news blog. People were painting me to be like some horrible person when mind you, there are women inside men and women actually inside the news industry that do bikini and body competition. So they're wearing far less than I was, but yet I'm, I'm the bad guy here. So I remember, um, towards the end of my career, I was actually doing weather and anchoring more things like that. So I was called on to do a lot, got a raise this and that. But I remember the last time I was on air, I get, I got finished with the six o'clock news filling in for our main, um, weather forecaster and our meteorologist rather. And they bring me in and it was just so eerie. They bring me in and they basically fired me right after I got done working for them and finished what they need me to finish oh, man. because of that photo and just reactions to it. And I was like, you're joking, right? And they're like, no, I was like, I posted that on my personal profile. They're like, well, viewers don't know the difference. And I'm like, viewers don't pay my bills like at all. 
the yeah. advertisers do, you know, so on and so forth. So I, I felt a, at, after that moment, a huge burden. I just felt really light. But the way they treated me is they walked me to my desk, pick up the stuff out of my box. I'm like, I got this. And they basically looked at me like everybody in the newsroom and how they walked me out. It's like, I just murdered somebody. Oh, like man. I was going to be taken into custody. I was like, yeah. you guys are ridiculous. So, um, yeah, that was that. And so I had a a really pivotal decision. I was like, what do I want to do from here? And I've always wanted to move back down to California. I was born in Newport beach, um, lived in, grew up in Oregon, uh, did news in Oregon and in Eastern Washington. Then I decided, you know, within a month, I'm like, I'm going to pack up my car, um, sell what couldn't fit. And then I moved down to orange County, lived with my best friend and kind of hopped around, um, with a few different people. That's a whole nother side of the story, but just, that's the undoing of my career. It was like, that was it. After everything that I've given to them, everything that they've gotten from me, it was like, and they still couldn't show me in the contract as to where was I disobeying their rules that I signed. They couldn't give that to me. And I was like, why am I going to fight this? You know, I'm going to fight something that I don't want to be in anymore. Right. And I could have gotten jobs elsewhere because I, I did have offers, but I didn't want to go back into that rat race because I had to open up not one, not two, but three credit cards just to survive and live normally because the pay was so horrible at wow. those smaller stations. Yeah. Um, and I was like, it's just not worth it. Yeah. And all of that, I mean, it could have been tempting, right. To just say, all right, I'm going to go over here and screw these guys. I'm going to show them what they're missing and stay in a career that really wasn't healthy or fulfilling to you. That's interesting that you, again, that you did that. Cause I know a lot of people, some of the messages we get and the calls we get are people are just while your head can know one thing is good for you. On the other hand, it's so much work and it's such a monumental change. You're like, I don't have the energy to do that. Like it's easier to stay right than, than mm-hmm. to go. So I love that. You, I love that you did that. And so you just showed up in California and started, you had friends that were going to, that just you hung out with and moved from here to there to there while you figured out where to go. You didn't even get, get yourself locked into something until you did the lay of the land and figured out your plan of attack. So I would say I moved with about $2,000 in my bank account. It's all I had. And in California, that goes very quick. It'd probably go very quick anywhere. Um, so I, I moved in with my best friend. Um, they let me live there for free. And I had my nutrition and fitness business. And I was also in direct sales. So I had other income coming in. Yeah. And they gave me that space to really figure it out. Um, so from her house, ended up moving in with my aunt and uncle afterwards, then found another place that kind of fell through, moved back in with family then moved out again. So in a matter of three years of living down here, I've moved five or six times nice. of just like hopping around, whether I was paying for a place or living for free or, or what have you. But there was a lot of learning and kind of jumping around to figure out what I wanted. But what's been really great throughout this entire journey from news till now, it's I've just been branding myself as far as showing that journey and who I've become and who I've grown into be that yeah. entire time. And that no matter what you do, that's pivotal because if you want to build anything, if you want to sell anything, if you have whatever, you have to brand yourself because so many people go into the marketing and skip the branding, but the branding's the, the, the why it's the, who you are. So no matter what I got into, people always wanted to be a part of something or refer people to me because they've trusted me. Even people around the world that I've never met in person, people that follow me, like, because I'm so transparent, they're like, okay, yeah. I, I would love to refer somebody to you or get into business with you or buy something from you or, or whatever that may have been. Yeah, that is so important. And it's hard to do too for people who may be a little shy or maybe a little introverted who maybe feel like they don't have any value to offer. Do you work with those people and help them realize the value that they have to offer people? What is that process? Yeah, I um what I get to do now is so fun. It's like I don't consider what I do a job. It's just I love doing what I do. You have to call it a job. It's how I make money. But at yeah, the end yeah. of the day, I get to listen to people's purpose, their passion, their stories every day on how they want to serve and impact others. Now, what's the best way to be visible with that? Get clarity on how you're going to do that and then um really like nail down that messaging because so many people just get so confused because if you have a business idea and you're like, blah, 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 and you're just like, you know, spewing words all over them, they're going to leave more confused and yes. running the other direction when you probably could, probably could have helped them. You just got to get really clear and concise. And so it's just bringing that clarity and really streamlining things because whatever it is that you're doing for business, if you're self-employed or you work for somebody else, there's a target market. There's certain people that need and want what you have. 
You don't want to go after everybody. You want to go after certain people right. and you can make a really great impact and income when you really narrow that down. So that's what I get to do for people um, in like the online service-based business arena, if you will. So mainly like coaches and I love it because I get to show them how to really make an even better long lasting impact with the people they get to serve. And then for me, it's always been about a ripple effect. So from the news till now, it's always been about a big ripple effect. So I get to do that now. And I just love it so much more because there's more freedom in that. It's enjoyable. You really get to connect with people on a personal level and I'm such a people person. So it's perfect for me. Yeah. I can see, oh, I just had this light pop on in my face. Um, so what you, you just touched on a couple of topics there that I do want to like kind of pull apart to, because again, it's all so relevant now and you're starting the multiple streams of income and how not to get discouraged when you're starting that business. You know, there's a lot of people whose careers have just kind of imploded on them right now during this COVID crisis. And some States are opening, some States are locking down. It's a, it's a disaster. Like really when you're trying to track what's happening, where it can make your head spin and it can be overwhelming for anybody, even if your business is doing okay now, just the, the, tension and the anxiety can be overwhelming. How does somebody really kind of step away from all of that and focus on their career? Say somebody comes to you and says, I was doing this job for 20 years. It's gone. I have no idea what I need to do now, but I need to do something. Here's the things I'm interested in. Can you help me? I love that you just brought that up because I'm actually getting that a lot. I'm yeah. getting a lot of corporate people that do trainings inside corporate or they they know how to do sales or they know how to build teams or they know how to do that kind of stuff. But they're like, I can't just have my my six figure income stripped from me and then be like, oh, sorry, you know, we'll figure it out when we can. Like you got a family to feed, you got bills to pay, like things just can't just stop. So a lot of people are getting that, you know, kind of bigger view of like, what do I, what do I do? So I have had those conversations of, okay, tell me what you did. And then this is how you can make it into like the coaching space and be able to train other people into, or just guide them into whatever your area of expertise is. But then I like to be able to draw out, like most coaches will do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but you get tapped out just like a personal trainer. You get tapped out. There's only so many hours in the day. So you can have one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, online courses, a mastermind, a workshop. And I, now I just named like four or five different streams of income doing the same thing that you would right. be teaching somebody if you were just to do one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm opening that up for people. And then on top of that, giving them a solution of like, here's what it looks like to do it yourself. And here's what, what it looks like to do it with a team and with our full service in-house team of, uh, um, for digital marketing we can help them execute that if they want somebody to take care of that. Because unless you really be, want to become an expert in marketing, you're going to beat your head against the wall and you're going to waste a lot of time and money. I see it happen all the time. And yeah, I relate I, it to people, meaning like I hate doing accounting. So I'm in the process of hiring an accountant because it's not worth my time to go through that, but I have to do that. Right. So it's the same thing for somebody's business. So it's just mapping that out and giving them like kind of like the cost benefit of what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. And that's with the company Dream Factory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you, how did you find them? How did you get into that? What is that? Let's talk, because I really want people to be able, able to connect with that and, you know, and find them if they, they need to find them or they're looking for this, because that's, I would love to know that somebody listening heard this and was inspired by you, moved by you, went to, to find that and it worked for them. So yeah, that would be so exciting. Yeah. I, well, this is the power of social media. So yeah. we connected because you found me on a post on Instagram, how yes. I connected with the dream factory this is going to blow people's minds. It's crazy how this is working. So um, a friend of mine found uh, my profile on Instagram and I'm a big person of faith and it said God first. And he reached out and he was like, Hey, I love what your profile says. I'm a really big fan of that. I see you're really good on Instagram. Can you come out to our social media boot camp and, and teach us some things for uh, network marketers, direct salespeople? And I was like, sure. I was in San Diego. So I go there and then one of the keynote speakers, his name is Adam Flores, who's the CEO of the Dream Factory, was speaking. So I met him, his wife, and his brother, Johnny, who's the videographer for the company. And we hit it off really well. Like, we just, like, really clicked. We're all around the same age, really clicked. Um, and it was awesome. And then Adam just kind of just got this inkling of, like, wonder if Molly's happy where she's at. I really would love somebody like that on my team. So he called me and was like, hey, would you be interested in, you know, making – X amount of money doing a couple, you know, closing a couple of sales, this and that. I'm like, sure, I'm open. You know, I like who you are. Mm -hmm. Show me the concept of your company. I'm open. We'll, we'll check it out. 
And then something just hit me where I was like, wow, this is the move I'm supposed to make. So I had to literally like rip off the bandaid. Um, this was like months later, ripped off the bandaid. I would say from March and then I started in August. So in that timeline, we were kind of talking and figuring things out and I went for it. So I left what I was doing before, went full-time with the Dream Factory. Not only when I went full-time with the Dream Factory, I actually found love in the process because Adam's brother, who's also the videographer, is my boyfriend, soon to be fiance. Uh, So (laughs) it's like I found love. I found a career. I found a really tight-knit family to work with and enjoy what we do. And it's like, Whoa, as soon as I was ready to rip off the band aid and just take that leap, another leap, mind you, because I've taken a lot in this three year period. Yes. It just has been so fruitful on how many people I get to help and finding love and finding, you know, more family and just so many amazing people in my life. And so, yeah, I tell people, like, if you're scared to take that jump, like, you are likely closing the door on some really big blessings that are right there for you because I never knew I was going to find that. That wasn't in, I didn't, I had no clue, but it just happened. And so, yeah, it was, it was a crazy journey, but I'm so glad that I'm here now because I'm having more abundance in every single area of my life now because I walked in that obedience of just like, I'm going for it. And then here we are. Yeah. I say that a lot. Sometimes you have to surrender to the experience and that doesn't mean you have to lay down and die and give up. Right. But you just have to accept. i I don't know the answers. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm in. I'm going to ride this ride and give it my best, throw my heart into it, and something is going to come out of it, right? And that's, yeah. I think that's where the best things happen. And I saw the video that you and your boyfriend did. His name is Jonathan. Yeah, you said, yeah. I saw yeah. the video where you guys did the one of the latest ones where you were talking about relationship advice and giving all that. And that is fun. Like, what is the importance of having that partner? And what difference can it make when you're in a relationship to have somebody who is at a minimum accepting of your career and at a maximum supporting and all in it with you? You know, what would you say to somebody who is maybe in wanting to go in, but their partner isn't necessarily supportive or understanding or maybe is dismissive about it? Mm, You know, it's everything to me that that Johnny allows me to be me and what I do, because being in sales, I talk to a lot of people. Um, you know, and so he's not a jealous person, whether it's men or women. And so that that's key because I talk to a lot of people. So I know jealousy is a really big thing for people that are really bubbly and outgoing like I am, but he has that trust and that is everything to me. So that was great. I didn't have to like help him out with that. He just came with that, which I'm so grateful for. But for the, for the people who have partners that aren't supportive, it's put your emotions and your feelings aside and you got to sit them down and ask and be like, well, why? It could be a money thing. It could be a, a trust thing. It could be they're just really scared and they're projecting their fears on you. And you got to be able to come around their feelings and emotions and be able to help them understand. And if they really don't want to understand, then that's, that's a really tough spot. And sometimes you just got to make that call if it, if it really feels right. Not everybody's going to have your vision. So that's where that's tough because especially people that are married, um, it's like, oh, well, why doesn't my partner agree? Well, you got to have those, those deep conversations. And a lot of people are scared to have those. So that's why Jonathan and I actually do these relationship Mondays um, on my uh, Facebook. We do it live and then just share. We're not trying to coach and give advice. We're just sharing what right. we go through and people just happen to really connect with it because we're a younger couple sharing our experiences and showing people this is what's possible when you actually are open and communicating and relationships are the basis of everything. If you have a bad relationship, if you're having an off day or an off week or month with your spouse or your significant other, that's going to shift everything else in your life. So you got to make sure that that's healthy and that's rooted and that's, that's going well. And if it's not, you got to ask the questions, you know, is this person right for me or what's wrong? How do we fix it? Depending on if you're just dating or if you're married. So yeah, that I'm super grateful for. It's definitely taken work, but then being outward with it and showing people and not being afraid for whoever comes on and listens and the backlash or the praise or whatever. It's just, we're being who we are. And so many people are scared to be who they are on social media. And that's why they're like not thriving because people just want to connect with real people. And that's why I'm so great at what I do. Not trying to boast or brag, but I'm just me. That is it. Like what you see online here on this podcast on a zoom in person, it's literally all the same. Like I get that all the time. And that's like the biggest compliment that I love to get is you're literally the same. You look the same. You sound the same. Like (laughs) there's no like, wow, you look way different. Like the same, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
I do. And that is also not entirely common across the board. So that's good. I think maybe it's becoming a little more so people are starting to call out, uh, you know, some inauthenticity they see. But that leads me into another topic, which we were talking about before we started recording. And, you know, I had mentioned to you that typically we don't go far into, you know, current event topics or too deep. But given what's happening today in this in this world and in this country, we think it's it's important and it's almost upon us to do so. Like we're almost negligent if we don't address some things. And so how I came to find you is because I was looking at one person's page and account and they were saying one thing and then I scrolled through people and it just led me to you. And what grabbed me about you is that not uncommonly, you and I don't necessarily express ourselves the same. I think we have the same heart, the same intent. We want the same things for the people in this country. We just have different ideas of how that should unroll and look like and and find out, which is fine and cool and expected, right? But what I found to be so rare and refreshing, honestly, about you is that you not only don't attack people who see things or express things differently, you actually encourage people to have grace and to look beneath it and to find the heart of that message and understand, just like you were just talking about, what is the root of that feeling? Why do they feel all that and all that? And then you mentioned that other people are afraid to express themselves on social media. So that leads me to a whole bunch of questions. Um, One, I think you had said that you got a little bit of heat from one of the posts that you did. What was that post and what kind of response did you get? It was in result of a, a Black Lives Matter post. And then somebody was commenting, saying that like, hey, um, this was a person of faith as well. And she was like, Hey, like non-believers are going to get the wrong idea from this, this and that. And all the post was saying is that like, all like basically like black lives matter, white lives matter. We're not saying one's better over the other. We're just saying we're bringing light to the injustice issue and that's it. And then she went through this whole like spiel of you're going to give people the wrong idea, this and that. And when I read that, I got heated because I'm just like, whoa, like you took that way out of context. But then yes. because I have self-awareness and I've really worked on that over the years, I backed up and I'm like, okay, where's she coming from with this? There's some things that she's not understanding. Let's help her get some understanding. Let's not attack her for what she's saying because there's truth in what she's saying. And like what, like she just wants, you know, prayer for everybody and like God's going to come and heal and this and that. That was her message to me. I get that. I receive that. But there's also like things that I believe people are not wanting to see because it makes them uncomfortable or they just don't seek to understand. I'm not black. I will never know what that's like. I'm white. I'm privileged. I have everything that I need. I will never know what that's like. So I'm really seeking to understand what the heck is going on in our country in that space. And because I have that platform, I want to drop those questions, even if it's uncomfortable. Because getting this kind of feedback, even if it's heat, I don't mind it because now I'm seeing different perspectives from people to know, okay, this is what they believe. So they want to just be in this corner. This is what they believe. These are the people that are in the middle that see from all sides trying to just figure out how do we navigate this? And that's where I'm at. Right. It's like, I want, I want justice for all, you know, perfect world. It's never going to happen, but we can work towards it if we have deeper and more meaningful conversations. And that's what this whole everything and what's going on and what you commented on my post. It's just having that deeper conversation. And I, I love because we did see things a little differently, but I appreciated your difference. And we talk about it openly so people can read that and just be informed and and not be afraid because it is hard to get backlash from people. It is hard for people not to agree with you and what it triggers inside of you. Sometimes I get really fiery and sometimes I'm like, "Eh, okay, sure. Whatever. Like you win some, you lose some. If you want to block me, unfriend me, I really don't care, (laughs) but some people really do care. And so it's just having that, I call it like rhino skin. A lot of us have that soft baby skin coming right out the womb where it's like really squishy, but you got to have that rhino skin when it comes to expressing how you feel and not caring how other people feel in the back end. because I'll finish on this point. I know you probably have other questions, but My family, for example, hates what I do on social media. They've unfriended me so many different times and friended (laughs) me back. Like they hate how open I am. They disagree with me nine times out of 10. They're just more private people than I am. But I said, hey, my vision isn't for you. If this doesn't help you, that's fine. I love you where you're at, but it's going to help other people. And it's helped thousands of people with all the different things that I've shared over the years. And that's what I'm doing it for. If you don't see or connect with my vision, that's fine. It's not for you. Yeah. I, 
I do share that too, because when you're doing anything similar to what you're doing to what I'm doing, um, it can be hard for your family to to grasp it, right? Especially if they're like they go to work, they have jobs and structured schedules and bosses and demand, you know. And so people still look at me like, "What? What are you going to do when you grow up?" I'm like, "Dude," <laughs> but um, so so I do get that, but it is. What do you say to somebody who is in a job now or in a career now, or maybe just in a family or social situation now where they really are feeling passion? Because I think this is part of what is making people so frustrated and, um, you know, keyboard warriors kind of thing, but not post Like I had somebody come after me and give me a, a whole lot of heat. And it's crazy because I don't have the giant, like, a humongous platform, you know, a ton of followers, but the people that I have are invested. Um, and it's like somebody just launched into me and told me I needed to do better and she wasn't going to follow me anymore. She followed me through the grief journey, but she wasn't going to follow me anymore because of, you know, I have this white fragility or whatever it is. She was just telling me what, you know, what a terrible person I was and how this art. And not, I never come out and say anything like disrespectful. You know, I, I don't believe I do anyway online, but so, you know, so there goes a follower and there was a potential client and there goes all that and all that and all that. So how do you personally balance that? What would you say to people who are letting that fear of losing a client in particular or mm. losing a job stop them? And what would you advise to somebody who says, you know, I have to speak out. Is there a way or a manner in which you would advise them to do so to walk both lines? So good. I love, I love this because we've been told don't mix religion or politics yeah. or certain beliefs. And I don't talk about politics like hardly like at all because I just don't, I just don't want to go there. But faith is a really big thing for me. And so I've integrated that and I've had people say like, you're going to lose clients. And I say, good. If you don't believe what I believe, if that really yes. deters you, that is fine. And so many people are scared to lose the few, but guess what? You're going to gather the many. So let the few go away gather the many, really get that tribe that syncs up with you. And then you're going to, it's going to be so much more enjoyable because there's so many people out there that are scared to put who they really are because they're like, might lose a client or I might lose a friend or this and that. Well, good. They shouldn't be in your life if they don't agree and like, like find that same value system or if they don't respect what you have, even if they disagree, you know, have that respect right. factor. So I've actually found more abundance in my life by sharing everything who I am openly, faith and all. And I've had some backlash of it. And I said, I'm sorry. Like, if that bothers you, you can block me. You can mute me. Like, I don't care. And yeah. it's taken me a while to get there. I may sound like, oh, it sounds so easy not to care. It does at the end of the day, because what you went through and that lady unloading on you, I get those too. And I'm just like, do you know how hard this is to be public? to share these things, yeah. to go live to this and that, like, do you want to give it a try? That's what I thought. Like there's my grace sometimes needs to be a little bit bigger, but there's some people I'm just like, it's very small because I'm like, you don't understand like how much it took to get here. And you want to just like stomp and crash and, and bang all over the stuff that I just put out there. Guess what? It's not for you. So instead of me writing this long paragraph, which I want to write to like go off on somebody because I'm a fiery person at times. <laughs> I limit it. And I'm just like, yeah. I'm sorry you feel that way. All the best to you. Yes. And let them sit with that because they want to start a war. They want to make sure that you're that evil person that they, they paint you out to be. Right. And I'm like, okay. So you can't give them that satisfaction because that's wasting your time, your energy. Um, and so you, just, you can't be afraid of it, but it takes baby steps. Like you have to just start and start and start and then get that rhino skin. And look at people's posts. They're not trying to attack you thinking that you're the worst person in the world. Whatever they're going through that day or that month or what's right. happening in their life is playing into that answer. And you have zero control over that. But you have every control in how you choose to respond. You just got to look at it from a bird's eye view. Yeah. And I wish you know, more people would do that. I, I know I could do it better. I found that the people that most often attack me, interestingly enough, if you go back to their pages or their sites, they're posting like pictures of cats and Starbucks. Like they're, you know, like they're not even speaking. <laughs> like they don't want to come out and, and share their beliefs, but they take their time like going. And <laughs> so yes. it's very interesting to me. That tells me a lot about, you know, where that's coming from, right? Do you think yourself that if there was more of a shared 
uh, knowledge on how people can be less dependent on a boss or a job or paycheck and more self-reliant and take more control of their own careers and outcomes and, and, and health and all that. Do you feel like the anger level would dissipate in, in the country? Do you feel like people would have less frustration and rage that's unguided and unchanneled and maybe it would kind of cushion a little bit of it a little? I think it would make a difference if people really looked into like, I got to be careful in how I say this, but sometimes Mm -hmm. there's just no other word. It's like some people just want the convenience of having a boss and somebody giving them everything, boop, boop, boop. But now you're under their control and power. So when the government shuts down, guess what? Your income's getting cut and you're going on unemployment or whatever. Now, I believe that if there's more education out there and people really could like jump into that and give it a taste, like get a taste of what entrepreneurship is like. Like I know when I have kids, I want to put them in an entrepreneur minded school, not private school, not public school, entrepreneur minded school. Why? Because it's going to open them up so much bigger things and bigger conversations. I went to private school. I went to public school. I know both. I don't want either. I want something different for my kids because I wish I had a little bit different, even though I'm grateful for what I did have. So I think there's just people are, are lazy honestly, because there actually is a lot of information out there for people to get, but they choose to focus on other things. And then they wonder why they're broke at the end of the month or they can't make ends meet or why they're stressed and this and that. Like education is a powerful thing, but I'm also not even sitting here propo- like proposing that college is the answer either. No, I'm no, still paying yeah. back my college loans yeah. and <laughs> I got ridiculous. nothing from it. Yeah. And I'm in what I'm in right now because of what I chose to get myself into. Like I know people that make a multiple six and even seven figure income with no college degree because they said, you know what, like, this is what I like to do. Let's go focus on that. Mm -hmm. Guys, there are more courses out there than ever before. And people that will teach you, that's a fraction of what college will be. And then you'll make a lot more because a lot of these college graduates right now are looking for what? A job. A lot of the college professors make far less than I do. And a lot of other entrepreneurs that I know, but yet we're taking advice from them not saying they're bad people. It's just be careful in who you take information from. So to back to your question, I, I firmly believe that if people just took the time to not be lazy and invest their time in something wise, rather than getting on YouTube and drowning in these videos that make no relevance or sense or scrolling on social media, like save up some money, get into a course and start getting your juices flowing, get the left side of the brain going, like get some creativity up in there and then see what you can create. Because so many people just snuff out their purpose and their gifts because they're lazy. Yeah. And that's a hard truth. And that doesn't mean that everybody who, you know, has that job that nine to five, you know, I have teacher uh, sisters who are teachers and administrators and they work their butts off, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and they give a lot to it. So that's definitely not to, not, not like a sweeping statement for everybody who's not an entrepreneur, you know, but the, I think the point is that if you really want to find a way to have more control over your own financial well-being, your own freedom, your own health. There are ways out there and there are options and they are there. And either you sit back and just point out all the options that aren't there or you focus on the ones that are, you know, and that's that's where we're at. So part of what I do, what I love to do is write. I have two books out. I'm working on another book. So I'm always interested in people, what they're reading now, if somebody's writing now. So I'm just going to... I don't know if you like to read or whatever, but I see that book behind you. You want to tell us what, what, what that is? Yeah. So this right here, um, building a, a story brand yeah. is really just like the, the little thing, like, um, I don't even know what you call it. The bullhorn bullhorn. Yeah. That yeah. thing with the little magnifier voice yeah. thing. I'll figure it out later once I jump off this, what it's called. <laughs> but it says clarify your message. Yeah. So customers will listen. So it's all about just clarifying your brand, who you are, and then how to connect with those ideal dream clients, right? So this book is great. I love it here because I talk about branding all the time. So it's perfectly placed and it's a great conversation starter, but you are your brand. Your story is your brand. You know, I, I love reading books like this that give strategy, but then also I love reading books that are like about mindset and awareness. John Maxwell is one of my favorite authors. Um, that's definitely like books that I, I constantly pick up to dive into yeah. And then as far as even writing a book, um, I told myself it was going to happen this year and I just have made every excuse as to not sit down and actually do it just to be honest. Uh, but it's how to basically the, the book concept is, um, 
like building your brand on social media and making an income from it because of the brain that I've built, like the art of building a social brand and like how that can be profitable is essentially the idea. Um, I have the name somewhere on my phone, but I've been so wrapped up in so many other things that I haven't even looked at in a while. So I'm glad that we brought this up because I want to write that out and I don't want it to be like a three year process. I know I can like crack that out in a couple of weeks and just get that going. Um, but I've been able to really with the connections that I've made, been able to create a lot of sources of income, even outside of branding and marketing, just connecting people into the right place and just making referral cash because I love connecting people. So yeah. like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Boom. Some are small, some are very large. It depends on what it is I'm connecting people into. Right. And I do it because I love connecting people. But honestly, like, let's just be honest. I'm a business minded woman. It's like, well, let's, let's make something out of this. Sure. I'll put a little extra elbow grease in connecting you with so-and-so. And, -so and yep. it may not be residual, but results prove, then people are going to be like, oh, hey, you're the one that got that result for that person. I want to connect with you. And then it, it just snowballs. So yes. I love reading about strategy, mindset, because both of those play into just how you choose to network in the world and, and who's surrounding you. Because you build a strong network, I can go to anybody in my network and be like, who do you know that I could help with X, Y, and Z? Oh, let me think about that. I'll get back to you. I could go to anybody because of the brand that I've built and that trust that I've built. Yeah. And that's what's powerful about it. And that's all just because I'm just open and transparent of who I am and how I choose to share myself and not caring if you agree or disagree and having that conversation. Awesome. So one of the other reasons we started American Snippets, one of the driving forces was, and this seems crazy to say now, given what's going on, but three years ago, that's when all the negativity and divisiveness like really started coming to the forefront of my awareness and when it started impacting me personally. I'd worked so hard to come out of so many terrible years and I was just there and I found I was negatively impacted by the news, by the story, by social media, all this stuff. And so that's why we started American Snippets because we know that there are still, there's still so much good in this country. People are good hearted, kind hearted, so much opportunity, so much potential. One aspect of that is the American dream. And we know that the American dream still exists. We just, the caveat we make what people instantly will shut us down is because they think we're trying to cram our version of the American dream down their throats, right? But the beauty of it is that it's different for everybody. Every single person, if you ask, they're going to have a different version of the American dream. And we put the American in front of it because flaws and all, problems and all, this is still an amazing country with amazing opportunities. So I'm curious to know, from you, what is your version of the American dream? I love how you frame that. And I want to just take a tiny little step back yes. and what I was saying about entrepreneurship. Like I am not knocking the teachers, the doctors, the yeah, nurses, yeah. the everybody around here, because we, we need all of you. My mind is just an entrepreneurial mindset. So I'm just speaking to that person and kind of tugging at them because I, yes. I sometimes will get backlash because I'm so entrepreneurial mindset. They're like, you don't know what it's like. And I'm like, I don't, but I appreciate you. I <laughs> so without I I those people, you. we wouldn't be yes. able to survive as a society. So plus a my, lot of people don't want it. I'm sorry. A lot of people, they, they love knowing where they're going to be every Tuesday. You know, like the, mm -hmm. the thought of do of not knowing or not knowing like they can't plant things that they just want to know part of that. They think we're sick, you know, so at, to each his own. <laughs> I'm sorry, carry on. <laughs> no, it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. Like people look at you like, what is wrong with you? Like, yeah. did you not get Cheerios for breakfast as a kid? Right. Like, um, <laughs> so my American dream, like, you know, honestly, what I wish for other people is to really just get a taste of entrepreneurship, even a little bit. There, this country is built on entrepreneurs. Like everything you see around us from the pillows on your bed to the windows, to the lights, to the framework, every, your house, everything is because somebody thought of it and now you're purchasing it. That came from an entrepreneur. And then people just now mass manufacture. So if people really understood that concept, that's where what we're built on, then it would. I think it would shift people's paradigms a little bit. And so my American dream is just to see more entrepreneurs really step into what is it that lights them up? Or if you don't want to do that because you think that's that's crazy, support your friends that are entrepreneurs because there's a lot of people out there, you know, selling and servicing things that you could go get at Walmart or Target or this, that, and the other thing. But support local, support people that are trying to build something extra for themselves instead of knocking them and being like, well, that's a pyramid scheme or that's that's a scam or that's a this and that because it's not corporate. 
So my American dream is just really like, I, I'm such an entrepreneur at heart and I never thought that I would be, but I love being able to just discover, adjust, readjust even 10 times throughout the day and just be able to, um, create something that I'm proud of a legacy that I can leave rather than building somebody else's. And that's probably how I would sum it up is I want to build my own legacy, not be a part of somebody else's bigger legacy because I mean, I just want to leave something like when I leave this earth, I want to be like, okay, awesome job. Well done. Even if that was tomorrow, I can look at myself and be like, all right, you know what? I did everything that I could do. And the pandemic really helped me show like, am I doing everything that I want? Everything that it matters to me? It's not all going to happen like that, but at least taking those steps because when things shut down like that or a virus hits, you don't know when your time's up. Like you got to understand, like you got to really like be all in and don't just wait for a big wake up call, somebody passing a big catastrophic thing to happen for you to realize I didn't do what I wanted to do. So it's just the entrepreneurial thing is it's the country's built on it. And for some people, they still freak out, but it's like, at least appreciate the people who go for it. Appreciate the things that are around you because what you're using your phone to your water bottle to sticky notes, gosh, I could pick up everything on my desk right now. It was built by an entrepreneur. I love it. Thank you so much. And if people want to connect with you, follow you, get in touch with you, talk about your services, maybe work with you, refer you, whatever it may be, how can they do so? Yeah, I would say probably the easiest way because it's the easiest to find is if you go on Instagram um, at Molly, M-O-L-L-Y underscore Trotter, T-R-O-T-T-E-R. That's going to be the easiest um, on Instagram. You can also find me Molly Trotter on Facebook, same profile picture, um, even on LinkedIn as well. So yeah, social media is going to be the easiest platform. So I don't give you some long email here to write down. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes. Excellent. Molly, thank you again so much for taking the time to sit down with us, for being open and willing to to talk about different opinions and topics. It really is just super refreshing. And, uh, and I hope it encourages more people to do the same. So thank you. Yes. Thank you, Barb. I really appreciate you for asking me to be on this show. This is a wonderful platform that you're giving people and just educating people. So thank you so much for inviting me. Yay. Thank you. Thank you.